Shalom, I'm Ginger, and I wanted to share some things that ha have been on my heart. Um, I want to share about the Torah. I'm going to flatten my head out a little bit. Okay, um, the Torah that I am under is the Torah of belief. And I wanted to explain what that is. It's mentioned in Romans 3.27. So I'm going to flip over there in the Hallelujah Scriptures. That's the version that I read from. It's a restored name version. They, instead of using the name Jesus, they use the true Hebrew name for Messiah Yahusha. And instead of saying God for Abba Father, they say uh, his name, Yahuwah. They have it in the Paleo Hebrew. And if you look in the preface of most versions of the word, they admit to removing the name of Yahuwah, and they put in the name, uh, they put in the title Lord God or God in place of his name. And uh, you can look at, if you get a copy of the Hallelujah Scriptures, you can look in the back at the Paleo Hebrew chart they have and, and look at the sounds that the letters make, and you can find out what the name of Messiah is. It is Yahushua. It means I am your salvation. Okay, so I, I'm here at Romans 3, 27. It says, Where then is the boasting? It is shut out. By what Torah? Question mark. Of works? Question mark. No, but by the Torah of belief. Okay, so this is what I am under, the Torah of belief. If you look up that word belief, it means to rely, to rely on. So we rely on Messiah for our salvation. It says uh, in the very next scripture verse, For we reckon that a man is declared right by belief without works of Torah. Okay. I have a lot of friends that are under Old Covenant Torah, and that is wrong, because it says right here, for we reckon that a man is declared right by belief without works of Torah. Now, I want to go into this more, because to make a statement like that is quite a heavy statement, and um, so I want to explain what, what I meant by that. Galatians 5.18 says, But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. The law that we are under now is the New Covenant. The New Covenant. It says in Hebrews 8.6, it talks about how the, the Messiah is the mediator of a better covenant. I want to go there now because um, why would he bring, why would the new covenant need to be brought forth? Well, the reason is because the old covenant could not wash your sins away. The things that they did in the old covenant could not wash your sins away. And in the new covenant, we read that the Messiah came, Yehusha HaMashiach, who died. And Elohim rose him, raised him from the grave. And he ascended back to Shalmeim, or heaven. So I'm reading from Hebrews, or Ibram 8, 4, 8, 6. But now he has obtained a more excellent service, inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant, which was constituted on better promises. And then the very next verse says, For if that first had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. See, the reason why we had to have the new covenant, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> is because the first covenant, or the old covenant, was with fault. It says right here it, that it was not faultless, I'm going to read it again. For if that first had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. We had to have the new covenant come. We 
we had to have the Messiah come to redeem mankind. He is our Redeemer. It's faith in Him, or you can say belief in Him. It means to rely on Him. That is how we are saved. Okay, going on. It says in Romans 3.27, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. That was the King James Version. I'm going to read it again. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. I looked up that word law and it said regulation of Moses or law. So some of my friends on Facebook um you know, are under the Levitical law, or, you know, I have different friends. Some of them are under the, just the law of Moses, um, as far as like the, the, um, the Ten Commandments or whatnot. And, um, <coughs> some of my friends are heavy into Leviticus, and they're trying to do things the way that it's written out in Leviticus. And the dangers of going back to the ways they did things in Leviticus is that they were stoned to death for doing some things wrong. The Shabbat or the, the Sabbath keeping, you were stoned to death if you did it wrong in the Old Covenant. And... You know, that's that's a big deal because we know that if you try to keep part of it, you have to keep all of it, the Word says. So, you know, if you try to go back o under the Old Covenant, then you are obligated to try to keep all of it, but you can't. It says James 2.10, in James 2.10, For whoever shall guard all the Torah and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. That was from the Hallelujah Scriptures. So for whoever shall guard all the Torah and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. So if you try to go under the Old Covenant Torah to try to keep it, and you stumble on one point, you're guilty of all. Nobody could keep it. That's why we had the Redeemer come and die for us and bring us redemption. Okay, in James 2.14 it says, My brothers, what use is it for anyone to say he has belief but does not have works? This belief is unable to save him. So I am not against following Messiah. I am not against doing the works that he told us to do. He laid out everything we are to do. We are to be under the Torah of the Hamashiach, Yahusha, the Messiah. I use the Hebrew name for for him. And um, so let's go over that. The Torah of Messiah. Let's look up 1 Corinthians 9.21. Because some people might be like, what? Torah of Messiah? I've never heard such a thing. But it's in the Word. And really what you need to do is, if you don't have a red letter edition scriptures, where you can just see right away clearly what Messiah spoke, and then you can go through and read it yourself, and um, kind of highlight those areas where Messiah is talking, and do those things, because what we are to do is what the Messiah said to do. That's the Torah we are under, 1 Corinthians 9.21, here we are. I'm reading from Hallelujah Scriptures now. It says, to those without Torah as without Torah, not being without Torah toward Elohim, but under Torah of Mashiach, so as to win those who are without Torah. Okay, so what is the Torah of Mashiach? The Torah of Mashiach means whatever the Messiah said to do, we do it. Okay, and this is significant too. I'm going to back up to verse 13 in the same chapter. 
Do you not know that those serving the mikdash eat from the mikdash, and those attending at the altar have their share of the offerings of the altar? So also the Adon instituted that those announcing the good news should live from the good news. But I have used none of these, nor have I written this, that it should be done so to me. For it would be better for me to die than to anyone, that, than that anyone should make my boasting empty. For if I bring the good news, it is no boasting for me, for a necessity is laid on me, and it is woe to me if I do not bring the good news. For if I do this voluntarily, I have a re reward, but if not voluntarily, I am entrusted with the management. What then is my reward? That in bringing the good news, I should offer the good news of Mashiach without cost, so as not to abuse my authority in the good news. Why did I read that? We should be doing spreading the good news. The good news is that Messiah died for us. The good news is that he rose again because Elohim raised him up. I just saw a firefly go by. That was cool. Um, you you have to realize that we need to focus on what Messiah wants us to focus on. And that is spreading his, his word, his good news. Okay. So I wanted to go on here. Here's the definition of faith. Because we learned earlier that in Romans 3.27, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Um, again, law in that verse I looked up is number 3551, and it said regulation of Moses. Okay? So, we are justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Faith in the scripture means conviction, truth, truth or the truthfulness of God reliance upon Christ for salvation so we must rely on Messiah for salvation we do not um, we do not uh, want to try to rely on our own good works because that can't save us Galatians 3.10 says for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So what this is, again, this, this um, definition here for law is the same definition that I just read, which said regulation of Moses, or law. Number 3551. So for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. I looked up the word curse in number 2671 and it said, and it said imprecation ex, execration which I don't even I had to look that up in the dictionary or curse. Execration in the dictionary said the act of cursing or denouncing also the curse so uttered an object of curses, something detested. So if you put that in, it says, For as many as are of the works of the law, then remember we, we looked that up, that said, regulation of Moses, or law. As many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. That meant something detested. You don't want to be detested by Elohim, by Yahuwah, the, the Maker. For it is written... Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So what that means is that, like I read earlier, if you try to keep part of it, you have to keep all of it. Because that's what the word says, and nobody can keep all of it. James 2.10, For whoever shall guard all the Torah, and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. So I'm going on. Galatians 5.4, you who are declared right by Torah have severed yourselves from Mashiach. You have fallen from favor. So what does that mean? It means don't try to be declared right by Torah, by the Old Covenant Torah. Galatians 3, 2 through 3. 
or else you you've fallen from favor. That's really heavy. That's so <sighs> traumatic. Okay. Galatians three two through three. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the ruach by works of Torah or by hearing of belief? Are you so senseless? Are you so senseless? Having begun in the ruach, do you now end in the flesh? What does that mean? That means you need to be led by the spirit of Yahuwah. And you need to read his word. Read the new covenant and obey what Messiah said to do. That's the Torah that we're under now. Hebrews 7.19 For the Torah perfected not. I'll read it again. Hebrews 7.19 For the Torah perfected not. It cannot perfect you. The old covenant Torah cannot perfect you. But the bringing in of a better expectation. What do you think that better expectation was? That is the Messiah. Yahusha. He brought. He came to this earth from Shamayim, from heaven, to die on the stake for our sins. We must rely on him for salvation. Hebrews 8, 6 says, But now he has obtained a more excellent service inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant. A better covenant. It didn't say, But now he has obtained a more excellent service inasmuch as he is remaining in the Old Testament ways so forget what my blood did it didn't say that it said but now he has obtained a more excellent service in as much as he is also mediator of a better covenant which was constituted on better promises Hebrews 8 6 Romans 7 6 but now we have been released from the Torah having died to what we were held by so that we should serve in newness of the Ruach. We have been released from the Torah. What is that saying? Is that saying that we're not to be following what Messiah said to do? No, it's not saying that. What it is saying is that we are released from the Old Covenant Torah. Why would he come and bring them and save us and why would we have this new covenant if the old covenant was fine the way it was? We need to walk on the Ruach, in the spirit of Yahuwah. Romans 8, 1-3 There is then now no condemnation to those who are in Mashiach Yahusha, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Ruach. Ruach means spirit, spirit of Yahuwah. For the Torah of the Ruach of He in Hamashiach Yahusha has freed me from the law of sin and of death. For the Torah being powerless, the Old Covenant Torah powerless, in that it was weak through the flesh, Yahuwah having his own bane, that's a Hebrew word for son, S-O-N, in the likeness of flesh of sin and concerning sin, condemned sin in the flesh. He condemned sin in the flesh. He took sin upon him. He did not sin. He took our sin so that we could be reconciled back to Yahuwah through him. Romans 8, 9, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Ruach, if indeed the Ruach of Elohim dwells in you. And if anyone does not have the Ruach of Hamashiach, this one is not his. It is so important to be filled with the Ruach, HaKodesh. That means the spirit, the pure spirit of Yahuwah. Because if you don't have the Ruach of the Hamashiach, of the Messiah, this one is not his, it says. You are not his. So you need to ask to be filled with the Ruach, the spirit of the Hamashiach. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Ruach, if indeed the Ruach of Elohim dwells in you. And if anyone does not have the Ruach of the Hamashiach, this one is not his. You must accept the Ruach. Call out and say, Yehusha HaMashiach, I call out for your Ruach to fill me. You must accept the Ruach. Romans 8.14, For as many as are led by the Ruach of Elohim, these are the sons of Elohim. We must be led by the Ruach. 
led by the Spirit. Romans 13.10 Love does no evil to a neighbor. Therefore, love is completion of the Torah. Okay, we need to love. Love Yahuwah with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. Philippians 3.9 says, And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through belief. Again, that means relying on the Messiah. Belief in Mashiach, that's the Hebrew word for Messiah, the righteousness which is from Elohim on the basis of belief, on the basis of relying on Messiah for salvation. Titus 3, 5 through 7. He saved us not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his compassion through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Ruach HaKodesh, which he poured out on us richly through Yahushua HaMashiach, our Savior, that having been declared right by favor, we should have become heirs according to the expectation of everlasting high. That's a Hebrew word, H-A-I. It means life, everlasting life. So he saved us not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his compassion through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Ruach HaKodesh, which he poured out on us richly through Yahushua HaMashiach. You must have Yahushua HaMashiach and have to be filled with his spirit. We are not declared right by our own works. Titus 3 and 9. But keep away from foolish questions and genealogies and strife and quarrels about the Torah. For they are unprofitable and useless. So what you're going to see on Facebook sometimes is these people who love to quarrel about the Old Covenant Torah. They like to say, oh, we're still under it. Oh, they'll say, oh, the Ruach will help you to keep all the Levitical laws. No. I never read in, in the New Covenant where it says the Ruach has now told us to go back under what, what used to be done in the Old Covenant way. Ibram or Hebrews 7, 11 through 12. Truly then, if a if perfection were through the Levit Levitical kohuna, for under it the people were given the Torah, why was there still need for another kohen? That mean, means high priest in English. To arise according to the order of Melchizedek, and not be called according to the order of Aaron. For the kohuna, or high priest, being changed of necessity, there also takes place a change of law. There also takes place a change of law. The Hamashiach, Yahusha, I say the Hebrew name for the Messiah, and it's Yahusha, he brought salvation, and now we have a change of law. Now we are under the Messiah's law. Everything he said to do, we should do it. Hebrews 7.22 By as much as this Yahusha has become a guarantor of a better covenant. Do I still read the old covenant? Yes. Do I burn it up and tear it out of the Word? No, I read it. But I live under the New Covenant. I do what Messiah said to do because He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through the Hamashiach, except through Messiah. Hebrews 8, 6, But now He has obtained a more excellent service inasmuch as He is also mediator of a better covenant which was constituted on better promises. Hebrews 8, 13, by saying renewed, he has made the first old. Now, what becomes old and growing age is near disappearing. Hebrews 9.15 And because of this, he is the mediator of a renewed covenant. The Messiah is the mediator of the renewed covenant. So that death having taken place for redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called might receive the promise of the everlasting inheritance. So what that means is that we are under the renewed covenant. It says, and because of this, he, he, talking about Messiah, is the mediator of a renewed covenant. So that death having taken place for redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called might receive the promise of the everlasting inheritance. Do you want the everlasting inheritance? Well, then, 
follow the mediator of the renewed covenant, the Messiah. Hebrews 5, 8-9 says, Though being a bane, that's a Hebrew word for son, S-O-N, he learned obedience by what he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the causer of everlasting deliverance to all those obeying him. So, please do not say that I am against obedience. I am not. I believe that we are saved by favor, through belief, some say faith, belief meaning relying on Messiah for salvation. It's not of ourselves. It's a gift of Elohim. Okay, so we have to rely on the Messiah and we're saved, period. But I do believe that if you truly love him, you will follow him. He said that in John 14, if you love me, keep my commands. That's what Messiah says, so we should keep the commands of Messiah as he is our way to Yah. I call Abba Father Yah. In Psalm 68, 4, you can see that that's the shortened version for Yahuwah. The, I mean the shortened name for Yahuwah. Hebrews 10, 1. For the Torah having a shadow of the good to come and not the image itself of the matters was never able to make perfect those who draw near with the same slaughter offerings which they offer continually year by year. Okay, so for the Torah having a shadow of the good to come. When you go to the Old Covenant Torah, you see these, you know, there are types and shadows. He, Hebrews 10, 9 through 10. Then he said, See, I come to do your desire, O Yahuwah. He takes away the first to establish the second. By that desire we have been kod kadash, or pure, through the offering of the body of Yahusha HaMashiach once for all. So we're pure through the offering of the body of Yahusha HaMashiach once for all. That's so clear. It said, See, I come to do your desire, O Yahuwah. He takes away the first. He takes away the old covenant laws so that we can do Messiah's laws. I am all for obedience. We must obey the Messiah. Hebrews 10.38 But the righteous shall live by belief. But if anyone draws back, my being has no pleasure in him. We must live by relying on Messiah for salvation. Hebrews 12:24 And to Yahusha, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the blood of the sprinkling which speaks better than Hebel. Hebrews 12:28-29 Therefore receiving an unshakable reign, let us hold the favor through which we serve Elohim pleasingly with reverence and awe, for indeed our Elohim is a consuming fire. It is nothing to play with trying to do all these Old Covenant Torah laws, all these Old Covenant Torah, or all these Old Covenant laws. It's nothing to play with. We are not to go under that. Because remember, it says in James 2.10, For whoever shall guard all the Torah, and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. You can't keep all of that. You try to keep some of it, and psh, you're going to mess up. Because why would Messiah come if we could just do all that and be, be fine with it? Okay. So I am not against the works that Messiah tells us to do. It says in James 2.14, My brothers, what use is it for anyone to say he has belief but does not have works? For this belief is unable to save him. So yes, I believe if we love Messiah, we will obey him. Okay, not these old covenant laws. We need to obey Messiah. So I wanted to share that. And I do see that um, the Ten Commandments are kind of reworded. They are, I found them in the, in the New Covenant. Um, so, you know, I don't want you to think that, you know, it's um, okay to murder and to steal and to have idols. I don't because we see all of this in the New Covenant how we are not to um, you know be be killing people and, and having idols and all that. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 
covers that and um, there there are other scriptures that go into <coughs> explaining how we are to um, love Elohim with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength and um, how we are not to lust. So that would cover um, not coveting your neighbor's spouse, you know, and um, those other Ten Commandments they're, they're found in the New Covenant. They're reworded, but they're found. So I don't want you to think that I'm okay with people murdering people and people stealing and all that. So I just want to clear that up because bringing a message like this sometimes get all these comments. And so anyway, I love you, and I wanted to share this because it, it's been on my heart today. I studied today on this, and... I felt like I was supposed to share it. Um, yes, I use the Hebrew name for Messiah, and I use Yahuwah for um, the Father's name, uh, but I don't want to be mistaken that I'm under Old Covenant Torah, because I'm not. I live under the New Covenant. I follow the Messiah and what he said to do. So, I just want to clear that up. I don't want people to think that I'm lumped together with all those Torah people who think they're justified by the Old Covenant Torah. I love them, and I pray for them that they'll understand that their justification comes through the Hamashiach. Have a blessed night. Shalom.